Hello. <clears throat> so I have two essentially conflicting ideologies surrounding choreography. I, I hate to boil it down to simple things, but it, these two cover probably the vast majority of my, of my approach to choreography. Let's deal with the first and simple one. I've seen a couple choreographers. I know a couple that kind of want things very fine-tuned from the very beginning and want everything to look right, and they kind of painstakingly go through everything. And these people are greatly respected because the process that the audience sees, the process that the parents see, the process that the coach that hired them sees, is that everything is well-refined and perfected and really, really solid all the way through. But it takes them forever to get a finished product, like I, I, four, five, six hours of choreography. Um, I, in the meantime, you're missing out on training time for that solo. So I don't approve of that methodology whatsoever for choreography. I want to, there to be a finished product within basically an hour. At least an hour. If I have a kid who's quick at picking up things and I, you know, the music's easy to connect to, um, I can usually get a solo done in, of any length in a half an hour. But the way I do this is I do a very bare bones solo where I'm basically just blocking out the solo, finding out where all the jumps and spins are and laying out the basic layout of the solo. Beginning to end, uh, essentially, um, you know, I want to say trick free in, in incredible simplicity. But the way it works out is you end up having some uh, um, off the top of your head ideas for footwork or field movements or arm movements or head movements or something interesting throughout the solo. So it ends up not being a totally basic skeleton the way I do it. It ends up being, you know, my approach is to try to get a basic skeleton done as quickly as possible and then go back and fill it in, but it doesn't actually work out that way. It ends up that I end up with some uh, very interesting things even in the first draft. But when I'm done the solo, let's say after an hour of, of choreography lessons, I generally will let them go, uh, you know, at that point I want them to start going through it with the music full, full blown, full speed, full, the full run throughs to start training the soul, to start training the rhythm and the, the, the timing and the trying to get all the jumps and spins to work in the places they are, um, just so we can find out in a very basic level whether the layout works, whether the layout will work in the future, whether everything is coming together properly, uh, whether the timing is correct, and it also gives us a better idea of how they're going to respond to what I've already done as far as choreography, arm movements, artistry and how much more we can add in uh, how much can they mentally handle, how much can they artistically handle, how much can they choreographically handle um, whether I need to change anything that I've already done because it either doesn't look right or it's too hard um, or whether I'm just, it all looks okay and I can start going back through it with a fine tooth comb and start adding in um, things to cover the gaps. You know, by the time I'm done a solo, there will usually be a 15 to 20 second place here or there where things just aren't quite working right. Uh, and I'll want to go back and revisit that area. The, I, every once in a while I have a parent ask me when choreography is done. Um, for the most part, it's not done. You stop trying to tweak it about a month before a competition so that they can get used to a consistent performance standard up to that competition. But after the competition, you're probably going to have a half dozen things again that you didn't work as well as you want, or you want to fine tune, or you want to train a little more, or you want to add, tweak a little bit here or there. So it's really an ongoing process that never really ends. Um, and how detailed and how picky you want to be about the choreography it depends a lot on the kid, but it depends way more on the level they're at. Obviously, at an international level, at the Olympics, you're going to be tweaking your choreography and spending more time and effort on it than you did at lower levels. But at the same time, you're also better at executing choreography, so it should be, in, in some senses, less time, left, less effort. At least for the payoff of the finished product. You know, if I'm going to do a skeleton of, uh, of, of what I like to do in choreography, I like to get the whole solo done in about a half hour to an hour. Um, then I leave it alone for two to three weeks, let them run through it, say, five to ten times. 
uh, then they'll hopefully give me feedback on how it's working and then I'll go back and kind of go over it all again and smooth out any rough parts, add things into places where there's blanks, maybe take something out that's not working, it's looking as awkward as it did the first day I, I did it with them. Um, and then again, I let them run through it five or ten times by themselves, and then I go back and do it again. And hopefully I only have to do that three, four, maybe five times, and with a little less time and a little less pickiness every time, because it should just be kind of flowing together to some extent by itself. The kid should have some concept of musicality, rhythm, flow, um, you know, I, and I'm explaining all that as I'm doing it. You know, I want you to cover the ice here. I want you to make sure you do a big circle here. I want you to gain speed here. I want you to be, you know, a little bit more aggressive here. You know, I'll tell them what I'm expecting, and I expect that to kind of improve over time without me really uh, um, nagging about it or, or hounding them about it. I guess that's it. That's my basic idea, which somewhat conflicts with my other idea, which I'm about to share. Bye.